going around Spain right now. And this is the way the ransomware works. This is unlikely at this stage that hackers have set out to target NHS Trust specifically to go after Blackpool, say, or Essex, as you mentioned. What happens is there's ransomware spread. It's like an email chain. It looks for weaknesses, people opening emails. Lots of people, of course, working in the NHS. That gives a big attack surface for hackers to exploit. So it's unlikely that this is a methodical attack, trust by trust. This is something that's just spread like wildfire through people opening it. That doesn't mean it's not damaging, though. If you're locking down the entire systems, we're hearing that some hospital NHS trusts are going back to paper and pen while they try and back up their systems. Hugely disruptive. And there's a, a sort of inflection point that happens with a lot of this. When so much stuff goes online, but the cybersecurity isn't there yet. Each NHS trust is responsible for its own cybersecurity. NHS Digital helps them out. Other agencies help them out, like the NCSE, the National Cybersecurity Center. But fundamentally, each trust is in charge of its cybersecurity. And we've seen in the past, we had an investigation on Sky News last November looking into how much trust spend on cybersecurity and how that correlates to their cybersecurity. Actually, a lot of trusts don't spend any money on cybersecurity. Others spend quite a lot. The average is about £20,000 a year. Is that enough in a world where there are these viruses, these ransomwares flying about the whole time? That will be the next question. Did these NHS trusts do enough to secure patient data? OK, Tom, uh, for now, many thanks indeed. We'll just talk to Peter Warren, who's the chairman of the Cybersecurity Research Institute, uh, who joins me on the line. Many thanks indeed for joining us. Uh, your reaction uh, to the news this afternoon that uh, a number of hospital trusts have been uh, affected by what appears to be a cyber attack? Well, I think it's shocking and I think it's unprecedented. I also think it's a, it's a historical moment because this actually proves now how incredibly important cybersecurity is. And it's something that people have actually not been taking seriously enough for a number of years. And now this is really you know, coming home to roost. And just to pick up on one of the things that your correspondent said, £20,000 is not enough to protect a large organisation like a hospital trust, considerably more money than that needs to be. So, Peter, how much time, how much effort does go into cyber security uh, for the various hospital trusts up and down the country? How much is it a, a prominent theme when uh, official security officials do sit down and have their meetings uh, about how to uh, protect the NHS from threats such as this? Well, I'm not exactly a party to um, exactly what the NHS does. But um, going from the, the picture generally across the uh, country, cybersecurity is not pushed up very high, very high in terms of priorities. And if you think about it, NHS trusts are under a lot of pressure to deliver in so many different areas. I would have thought that cybersecurity would slip a little. One of the things that we've noticed in, a, in research that we've done over the past 15 or so years is that hospitals do seem to be pretty leaky when it comes to data security. We've uh, uh, picked up files from hospitals that have got... Uh, uh, specific patient information on very sensitive uh, patient information from discarded hard drives. We've also found that a lot of the Wi-Fi in hospitals is not particularly secure. So it, it's no surprise that this isn't, um, it, this is one, it's happened, and that two, cybersecurity isn't as high up the list of priorities as it should be. Uh, Peter, our technology correspondent Tom Cheshire was alluding that uh, he, he believes that this is ransomware. You throw it out there, you see who will take the bait and it can uh, quite a simple thing to do but it can cause severe damage. Yeah, I, we did the first stories about, about ransomware a while ago. Um, the, the thing about this though, there, this does seem to be a, another factor, doesn't there? That other factor would be that this has affected a number of hospitals. Now, if people are going to open up an email, then it means that everybody has fallen for the same email or, or for similar emails. It might even be a particular weakness within the hospital system. There could be hospital systems that um, uh, uh, are given to the hospitals by, or, or sold to the hospitals by one manufacturer or one software supplier, and there may be an error in that. I find it a bit unusual that so many hospital trusts are affected because that suggests that lots of people have fallen for a ransomware email and that isn't necessarily the case. So to so give us a, an indication of how linked um, the hospitals' uh, internet services are for something like this to happen? Well, the hospitals, they, they, they will be linked to the GPs, they will be linked to uh, various other systems, but within each NHS trust. 
there was a move to try to put huge amounts of information online, to put the entire NHS online. Uh, one of the reasons that that failed was actually because of cybersecurity fears, because the NHS wanted the, the data to be encrypted. And this is an ironic thing that uh, they've been bitten by something that encrypts their data and they don't have the key to it. OK, Peter, many thanks indeed. Let's talk to Phil Booth from uh, Med Confidential, a website focusing on medical confidentiality, is on the phone for us uh, this afternoon. Uh, your reaction to the news that uh, hospital trusts uh, in England have been affected by a cyber attack? Well, it's obviously very deeply concerning. Um, as the previous um, interviewer, interviewee sort of said that you know, things are moving too slowly, and this is entirely correct. Dame Fiona Caldicott, uh, in June of last year, published a review of data security, consent and opt-outs, uh, which focused very heavily on the need for proper security, good practice, proper training. Uh, NHS Digital has, um, you know, subsequent to that, has uh, implemented a program called Care Cert. So it's working with you know, all the right agencies. But we're talking about um, you know, the whole of the NHS, uh, a massive system where... Um, you know, people have emails and uh, computers are all sort of, um, you know, vulnerable to these sorts of attacks. And so what I think we're seeing here is, you know, um, uh, a situation where there have been warnings, very, very clear warnings, uh, and there has been not sufficient action. You know, in a, in a year, the government has not responded to Dame Fiona Caldicott's review. Uh, Phil, just give us an idea of the challenges that hospital trusts uh, up and down the country face when it comes to uh, issues such as uh, cybersecurity and making sure uh, patients' information uh, remains safe. Well, you know, patients' information is, is in, held in many, many different systems. Uh, while you know, each hospital may have its own computer system, um, some of that data is sent up to uh, NHS Digital. Uh, and so there will be, if you like, copies of, of that information. Uh, so that would be hopefully uh, kept securely. But at the individual hospital trust level, um, you know, they're responsible for purchasing their own uh, information systems. And, you know, we, so there's a, there's a sort of an ecosystem of, of, of very varied systems. Um, and each of them will have their own vulnerabilities. So while each trust um, needs and is responsible for its own cybersecurity, this overarching program called Care Cert is at least trying to put in place uh, the sorts of threat advisories that people need and they need to act on promptly, to be publishing the good practice guidance that needs to be embedded in everyone, you know, everyone who uses uh, email or could be exposed to this sort of risk across the NHS just needs to know, don't click on it or if something's happening like this and, you know, there is a, a sort of spreading problem across the NHS, then be ultra, ultra careful not to click on anything that you don't know where it's come from. And, of course, you know, we're talking about uh, this is a nation-scale uh, issue here. We have national cybersecurity um, uh, facilities that opened up in, in London uh, just, uh, just recently. Uh, so we've got to really start taking this very, very seriously. Um, we are very much in the thick of it. Uh, this is uh, a fluid situation right now, but moving on, moving forward, what lessons do you hope um, security officials, um, those who work in security within the NHS, will be hoping to learn uh, from this ransomware attack? Well, I, 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 what I hope is that um, people will learn that, A, um, this is a massive uh, training and education issue. It is not just Sort of we can do something to, to the computers. This is a whole system approach. So everyone needs to be fully aware of the risks and know what they need to do. Of course, there must be investment and proper investment in cybersecurity because we're talking about the medical records of the entire nation here. Um, you know, a hospital trust may contain millions of records. Uh, you know, they are, they are caring for lots and lots of people. And I guess when an incident like this does happen and when people you know, are you know, scared maybe or, or concerned about what might have happened to their information, then ultimately patients must know how their data has been used or abused. In this case, obviously, it's, it's abuse from outside of the NHS, but people need to know what has happened, what, if anything, what steps, if anything, they as patients uh, may need to take. Um, and this is what we are saying constantly. We need proper 
communication of what is happening to people's data, and the NHS needs to make sure and have you know, the proper investment from government, the proper responses from government to be able to handle this sort of event. Okay, Phil, many thanks uh, indeed for joining us. Well, let's go live to our chief political correspondent, John Craig. He's in Westminster for us uh, this afternoon. This is going to have significant political ramifications, John. Well, we've spoken to the Department of Health. Obviously, we're in the middle of a general election campaign. Uh, there were all sorts of fears about cyber attacks and meddling in the election. I don't think we were quite expecting an attack on the NHS. Now, the Department of Health have referred us to NHS Digital, and uh, they say that as of 15:30, uh, that's what about uh, three quarters of an hour ago. 16 one six NHS organisations had reported that they'd been affected. Now. Um, they say that a number of organisations have reported they've been affected by a ransomware attack. Um, the investigation is at an early stage. Um, the the uh, ve well, there's a technical bit there. I'll let Tom De Cheshire explain. Um, at this stage, now contradicting what the last uh, uh, guest just said, at this stage we do not have any evidence that patient data has been accessed. We'll continue to work with affected organisations to confirm this. Now, Digital say that they're working with the Cyber Security Centre and the Department of Health and NHS England uh, to support those areas affected. Um, the attack was not specifically targeted at the NHS and is affecting organisations from across a range of sectors. So, potentially, it's not just the NHS, other organisations as well, perhaps other public bodies. Who knows? We'll find out shortly, no doubt. Uh, they're talking about uh, supporting organisations, uh, but they're continuing to uh, communicate with NHS colleagues. Um, so the key points there, really, 16 NHS organisations but they're saying, uh, contrary to speculation, they don't have evidence that patient data has been accessed. No doubt uh, we will hear from, uh, uh, perhaps hear from uh, Jeremy Hunt, the Health Secretary, or other ministers, but bear in mind the uh, Whitehall is, uh, I wouldn't say it's shut down, but uh, Whitehall, of course, is uh, they're in Perda, there's an election on, politicians are not around, ministers are not around, and it does seem to be that it's officials at NHS Digital who are dealing with this at the moment. OK. Hey John, many thanks indeed. Well, let's run through what we know so far in terms of which hospitals have been affected. Derbyshire Community Health Trust tweeted this. We are aware of a major IT secure system attack. All IT systems have been temporarily shut down. More information will be available shortly. Blackpool Hospital said, we apologise, but we are having issues with our computer systems. Please don't attend a &E unless it's an emergency. East and North Hertfordshire NHS Trust tweeted this. We're currently experiencing significant problems with our telephone network, which we're trying to resolve as soon as possible. It is also affecting our IT systems. Uh, Filed and Wire CCG wrote, we are aware of an IT issue affecting some GP computer systems. Patients are asked for understanding while the issue is resolved. Please avoid contacting your GP. Practice unless absolutely necessary. Should you wish to obtain non-urgent medical advice, please call 111. Well, earlier I spoke to patient safety correspondent at the Health Service Journal, Sean Linton. Well, I, I am in a position to confirm that we certainly are, are having a, a nationwide ransomware attack. We have hospitals based in London uh, and right the way up into North Cumbria that are affected by this. Um, we have actually seen uh, the image uh, that some users are seeing on their computers, which demands uh, a $300 worth of Bitcoin to be paid within the next three days. Unless the uh, and if they don't, the NHS will lose its files, etc. So that's an image that's actually coming up uh, on some computers. And uh, as you can probably hear in the background, this is quite a developing story for us. But we are hearing a number of trusts are affected by this, and beyond those, several trusts are actually shutting down their systems as a precaution. And a number of major incidents have been declared. Patient emergency patients are being prioritised. X-rays, blood tests those kinds of things are not available in some places um, and as I said this is a nationwide attack we've got hospitals up and down the country uh, that have been affected by this. Well Sean Linton uh, talking to me earlier on uh, this breaking news uh, coming into us this afternoon that uh, according to the NHS 16 
NHS organisations had uh, reported that they were affected by this uh, cyber attack issue. Let's talk to our technology correspondent, Tom Cheshire, who has been uh, monitoring this afternoon. Tom, just um, paint us a picture of uh, what ransomware is and, and how it uh, affects those that are targeted by it. Well, ransomware is a type of malware. If it, it gets in your computer, by whatever means that might be, that might be opening a link, clicking on the wrong link, downloading a document. And what it does is it locks your computer, encrypts all your files and scrambles them, and says, if you want to decrypt them, if you want to get your data back, pay us some money. And this seems to be what's happening here. The NHS Digital have identified this as what they think is wanna decryptor, which is the name for a type of malware. Now, this isn't anything too fancy in the world. It's been out in the wild for some time, but it is getting around. So there's a massive uh, ransomware attack happening in Spain at the moment, not targeting hospitals there. It's actually ended up in companies like Telefonica, the communications company. And they're seeing a similar message to this. It's just in Spanish instead. Um, NHS Digital saying this wasn't specifically targeted at the NHS. On the other hand, it seems to have had a huge impact all across the country. 16 NHS trusts, which does raise the question of cybersecurity. This is a known problem, ransomware. Why did these trusts fall over? Why have they had to postpone operations in some cases and take these drastic steps of bringing it up? We ran an investigation last year into NHS, how much they spend on cybersecurity. Seven NHS trusts said they didn't spend anything on cybersecurity in 2015, at least. Uh, lots of trusts not able to tell us how much they spent. The average spend for an NHS trust is around £20,000 per year on cybersecurity. Now, when that means all this being happened, appointments being postponed, is that enough to be spending? On the other hand, some NHS trusts are very good, spending around £100,000 a year. And with this, there is you know, a correlation between how much you spend and how secure you are. So I think that's the next question. If this is an attack that wasn't targeted at the NHS specifically, these 16 trusts have been affected to a huge degree. Were they ready enough to deal with it? Uh, Tom, this statement coming into us from Bart's Health NHS Trust, which covers Myland Hospital, Newham University Hospital, the Royal London Hospital and St Bartholomew's Hospital um, and a Whips Cross Hospital. Uh, we are experiencing a major IT disruption and there are delays. That's all of our hospitals. We have activated our major incident plan to make sure we can maintain the safety and welfare of patients. The fact that they have activated their major incident plans, uh, some hospital trusts have had to cancel non-emergency uh, operations. Um, does this tell us that this is unprecedented? Yeah, I think the scale of this certainly is. We have seen hospitals knocked over in the past by ransomware. You mentioned Bart's. Actually, Bart's in January was hit by uh, a cyber attack, which had a big effect. We've seen other hospitals around the country. But it's always been on a piecemeal basis, one by one. What's different about this is the sheer scale of it. Bart's is the largest healthcare organization, the NHS, in the UK, and that's been taken down. So that's the big worry here is just how far it's gone. But Again, we've had 16 trusts, sources of the National Cyber Security Centre. They're working right now to try and ascertain what the impact is. NHS Digital saying no patient data has been accessed, which, if it's true, would be a good, good thing. This looks like it's a smash and grab run recently, basically. Hackers trying to make a quick buck by shutting down these systems, uh, giving them three days to pay the Bitcoin, $300, um, or however much each trust is being ransomed for. So this isn't something that... When we think of those big hacking stories, you might remember Sony being hacked by North Korea, um, TV5 Mond, the French TV station, being taken off air. Those are very deliberate, targeted attacks which took months of work to make happen. This isn't like this. This is just seeing how far you can get it. This ransomware spreads by itself, looking for weaknesses wherever it's open. Because there are so many people working in the NHS, such a huge organization, it only takes one person to click a link to open that email and suddenly you've got a problem. The real question for trust is, Okay, hacking is a part of life. Every organization at this stage is going to be hacked. It's how you deal with it, how quickly you can get your backups online. So when you hear reports about some hospitals going back to pen and paper in the meantime while they try and deal with this problem, well, that's fairly worrying. In 2017, every hospital, every NHS trust should have a plan for this sort of attack. Um, Tom, the National Crime Agency is involved, is investigating. The National Cybersecurity Centre is involved, all working with NHS Digital. Just uh, give us an idea of what they'll be doing right now to resolve this issue. 
I think the first thing, the, especially the National Cyber Security Center will be doing is trying to work out just how many trusts are affected and to what extent, then working out exactly what's happened here. So if it is just ransomware and no patient data has been accessed, again, it's a very good thing, but they need to make sure of that because medical information is obviously some of the most sensitive uh, information around. If hackers have hold of that and they want to sell it on, that is deeply, deeply worrying. But what they'll be trying to do now as well is find out where this attack has come from. So. In recent years, hacking, it used to be a lot more of a wild, so it's still a wild west as you're seeing today, but in terms of going after people who have hacked, the National Crime Agency um, sort of working, they've brought a lot of hackers to justice by going them. So this is a criminal act, obviously taking these systems down and demanding a ransom. It's unlikely to have originated in the UK. But that doesn't mean they can't trace a way back, find whoever's responsible and come after them through international jurisdictions. OK, Tom, many thanks. Today. I'll leave you to continue monitoring at the events of this afternoon. Well, I'm joined now by Professor Iwas Rashid, who specialises in cybersecurity at uh, Lancaster University. Uh, many thanks indeed uh, for joining us uh, on the line. Uh, your reaction to the news this afternoon, the breaking news this afternoon, that uh, a number of uh, hospital trusts in England have been uh, affected by this uh, ransomware. I think, uh, thank you very much for having me here. I think one of the key things that this particular incident shows is the vulnerabilities that arise from our critical infrastructure, in this case, the health service being interconnected. Uh, and as your, your uh, technology expert was noting, this is a ransomware attack. But the key question we have to ask is uh, uh, how the critical systems, such as the patient information systems, are connected to what you may consider uh, non-critical systems, such as, such as email, because apparently, from what we know at this particular point in time, this particular attack has originated from, you know, an email which delivered a ransomware attack. And uh, there are multiple questions that we need to consider here as to how uh, such an attack could uh, propagate through not just systems of one trust, but across the various trusts and what kind of security measures are in place or what should have been placed and is not in place at this particular point in time. So what type of security measures are in place um, on a day-to-day -day basis? How do security uh, officials combat the, the threats that face services uh, like the NHS on a daily basis? There are a number of uh, good practices out there, and it really depends on what each organization is using in terms of its best practice. But there is, there is good practice around isolation of critical systems from non-critical systems. And you can certainly uh, do, uh, do quite a few things to make it difficult for, for attackers. And in this case, again, as we have heard earlier, this is a fairly well-known attack. It's, it's, it's a fairly simple uh, attack in, in many ways, but it's just the sheer scale of it in this particular uh, incident uh, makes, begs, begs the question as to uh, what are the kind of isolation measures that, that, that uh, various, or, uh, various trusts or across the trusts that are in place but also what kind of recovery strategies in, are in place. So one of the things that I teach my students all the time is that it's not only how you defend against an attack, it's actually how you respond and what mechanisms do you have in place to respond to an attack and how quickly can you recover from an attack. Uh, you know, without a doubt, the health service is a very, very critical part of our society. Uh, and and uh, when a cyber attack can disrupt it on, uh, on such a scale, then we really need to take a look at what kind of uh, system architectures do we have in place and uh, uh, how and why such, attack, such an attack can propagate so quickly and so widely. It does reiterate to us how what is apparently a simple attack can cause so much problem, so much disruption for all of us in our daily lives. Uh, yes, absolutely. And, and I think one of the key issues that comes from cyber attacks is we always worry about um, uh, you know, data being, being compromised, and that's a big concern. We don't know at this particular point in time if the data has been compromised or not, or is it just that it has been locked away to make a quick buck, so to speak. Uh, however, equally, it also uh, it, it, it compromises the public's trust in, in critical systems. Uh, and, and in this case, uh, uh, people will have concerns about their data. People have, would have concerns about their health, about uh, treatment, uh, you know, seeking urgent treatment and, and so on. And uh, from what we know already at this point in time, for example, some, some uh, GP surgeries and, and other, other, uh, other healthcare organizations have actually isolated themselves from uh, the NHS trust networks in order to protect themselves. And while it may sound like an extreme measure, actually isolating yourself in the case of an unfolding attack 
is, is a rudimentary but actually a very good measure because that at least means that the attack can't propagate to your system. Uh, but there are uh, good practices that can be followed in ensuring that the, such, a, such an attack doesn't propagate in the first instance because you, uh, as a very basic measure, you, t you should have an isolation between what I would deem a non-critical system such as an email uh, system and critical systems such as patient information systems which, which hold really important data. Okay, Professor Rashid, many thanks indeed. We just want to show these uh, live pictures coming into us uh, here at Sky Centre for St. Bart's Hospital where ambulances uh, have been uh, diverted. This comes after this uh, breaking news that we've been getting uh, this afternoon that a number of uh, hospital trusts have been uh, affected by uh, a ransomware cyber uh, attack. Uh, NHS England uh, has said that a number of hospital computer systems have been hit by this attack. Um, they go on to say that they don't believe that patient data had been accessed. Um, the attack was not specifically targeted at the NHS and is affecting organisations from across a range of sectors. That is uh, according to NHS Digital, uh, a statement from NHS Digital. We also understand that the uh, National Cyber Security Centre um, is now involved. They are facilitating officials at the NHS. Um, the Department of Health and uh, NHS England to support the affected organisations and to recommend appropriate uh, mitigation. So this is uh, breaking news uh, coming in to us this afternoon. 16 NHS organisations have so far believed to have been hit by a ransomware cyber attack. Stay with us. Uh, more on this story in a few moments' time. So you're looking for a savvy deal, do you? Trawl car boot sales hoping to find a lost masterpiece? Buy a car from Honest Terry? Maybe not. Or get this SIM-only contract for just £12 a month from Tesco Mobile. That's a saving of £36 a year and includes 4 gigabytes of data. But hurry, this offer ends on the 21st of May. And you'll only have yourself to blame if you miss out. Smile. You're on Tesco Mobile. What makes Ring the world's most advanced doorbell? Ring lets you see and speak with whoever's at your door from your smartphone. Hello? Uh, a package for Mrs. Thompson. Oh, fab. Can you leave it by the front door? OK. Save you a trip to the depot. Ring works off your home Wi-Fi network. It's easy to install and runs off a built-in battery. Or you can connect it to the mains. With Ring, you're always home. Available at ring.com and select retailers. TV advertising has never been so easy. Search Gorillascope. Ready for a summer break like no other. Ready? Come stay in our lakeside chalets or seaside hotels, just moments away from all the fun of Butlins. For great deals on summer breaks, visit butlins.com today. Every single day, nearly a thousand people find out that they've got cancer. Every day since the day they tell you. Every day. It's in your head. It's just not what a kid would expect to happen in their life. My children saw me sick. I was getting sick in bed. Yeah, it wasn't nice. It's not all bad news. There is a lot of good news as well. Research is making chemotherapy kinder, radiotherapy less destructive, and survival rates are higher than ever. Scientific research has saved my son's life. I didn't think like a little syringe of medicine could do that much. For just two pounds a month, you can make a real difference. I am living proof that this money is going somewhere. There are cures and every single day, small steps can be made and those small steps are going to create big changes. Today, as many people survive cancer as die from it. You can help Cancer Research UK achieve their aim of three in four people surviving cancer. Scientific research is absolutely amazing. I'm really asking you, please, put your hand in your pocket for Cancer Research UK. Grand Prix on our hands. Standing ovation for Joe Root. It's Major Johnson. 
going to be some year. Enjoy the biggest sporting events of the summer, live on Sky Sports. Uh, hello again. I uh, just want to pick up on uh, that break.